O-S-A-S -S stands for once saved, always saved. A truly saved person cannot lose their salvation before the rapture. I'm going to give you the bottom line up front. The position that a saved person can lose their salvation is so perverted that the person teaching that teaching is either lost or they are very blinded. Either way, in my opinion, they have great potential for chastisement from the Lord. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 through 11. Now, the saving gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ for our sins. Defined at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4. Please read them. Verse 3 says in part, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. All sins. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 says this, But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he died for all our sins. Now Jesus did all the work on the cross for our salvation, and he offers us eternal life as a free gift. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word eternal and everlasting, they're used in the New Testament over 40 times. But I'm going to choose John 6.47 with the word everlasting to tell you how we have everlasting life. And if you don't have it, this is how you get it. Jesus speaking, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. If you want more details on how to have eternal life, everlasting life, please look at video 152 pinned to the top of my page. Now, the once saved, always saved critics deny this. Their position is that everlasting is not everlasting. It's either temporary, probationary, or conditional. When they take the position that everlasting life is not everlasting after Jesus clearly tells us that we can have everlasting life, they are taking the position that Jesus, or God, is a liar. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm going to call these once saved, always saved critics gospel deniers. The gospel deniers claim that there is some sin or sins that a saved person can commit that will result in loss of salvation. Once again, everlasting life then becomes temporary life. Now, these gospel deniers are either lost, they don't have the wisdom of God in them, the Holy Spirit, or they're saved, but very blinded. How could these people be saved? Well, I believe they could be saved at an early age, 8, 10, 12, 14, something like that, at a church camp or whatever. They got truly saved. Then later on, they got some satanic teaching. They got re-educated, and they believed it. And they were blinded by Satan. Now, ponder. You just think about this for a second. These people can't understand the word everlasting. They can't get it. Now, here's another major problem with the gospel deniers. They can't understand the meaning of the word all, A-L-L, -L, all. Since Jesus died for all our sins, he forgives all sins of saved people. Colossians 2.13 says, having forgiven you all trespasses. 1 John 1.7, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. They can't get it. Jesus forgives saved people of all their sins, but the gospel deniers deny that. Once again, they maintain that there's some sin or sins that once committed by a saved person, Jesus will not forgive. Once again, they take the position that God is a liar when he says that he will forgive all trespasses, all sins. Now, how do gospel deniers fool people into believing that you can lose your salvation? Well, they run to some difficult verses in the Bible. 
And they say, look at these verses. They say you can lose your salvation. <laughs> but there's no verse in the New Testament that uses that phrase, lose your salvation. Why not? Because you can't lose your salvation. That's why not. Now, one way to interpret difficult, hard-to-understand verses is with simple, easy-to-understand verses. So when somebody tries to tell me that these verses teach you can lose your salvation, well, I run to John 6, 47. And I say, the King of Kings tells me that I've got everlasting life. So your interpretation of those verses must be wrong. Well, I run to Colossians 2, 13, where it says, I'm forgiven of all sins if I'm saved. And then I tell that uh, person, you must be mistaken. Those verses do not teach that you can lose your salvation. Now, this is so simple, so simple, if you understand the words everlasting and all. Now, Paul warns us about gospel deniers at Galatians chapter 1, verse 7. He was upset with the Galatians for teaching a works gospel. Galatians 1, 7 says this, There be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Gospel deniers pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, my recommendation if you encounter a gospel denier is this. Number one, they're probably lost. Try to witness to them. Lead them to the Lord because they're relying on some form of a works gospel. Number two recommendation, they could be saved. Once again, they could have been saved at an early age and got re-educated. Warn them of potential consequences. Warn them of potential chastisement, of perverting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Read them, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 through 11. Then, don't listen to them. Anyone who can't understand the word everlasting and all has got a serious problem. What else are they teaching that is wrong? Why are they so blinded? All treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Jesus, Colossians 2, 3. He hung on that cross. He bled and died. How much wisdom and knowledge do you think Jesus is going to give somebody who perverts the saving gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, if you want to look at some other videos on this subject, I did these videos, 106, 147, 151, 164, 183. 184, 185, and 186. In closing, I know what the words everlasting and all mean. Do you?